So this is a practice called social breath counting. And when, when I, after I'd learned the social noting technique from Kenneth Folk, um, and Emily and I had attended his first uh, facilitator training out in San Francisco at the PayPal mansion, uh, where he was living at the time. Uh, interesting place to learn social meditation. <laughs> um, we started to think about ways to adapt that basic move that Kenneth had made of doing these practices out loud with other people um, to other techniques. And breath counting is one of the most common um, forms of concentration practice that you find across the Buddhist tradition. Um, it seemed like every tradition that I've been exposed to where I'd read some of the core texts, like all of them mention breath counting. So I thought this, this, and that was one of the first practices that I did myself um, when I started to, to meditate again at, uh, when I was 19, was to do some basic Zen breath counting, you know, just counting the breath, one to 10. Uh, if I lost the count, I'd come back to one, count back up. It's a really nice way to engage the conceptual mind. And I've, it's also really a great practice uh, for me because I have this sort of uh, analytical tendency to love numbers. Not everyone's like that, um, but as a small child, um, I used to just sit with a pad of paper and just write numbers out. You know, from like and my mom called me the count uh, from like Sesame Street. Um, so if you're like me and you like counting and numbers, it's especially use, it's especially skillful because you get to employ that part of the part of the mind that likes to count. Uh, and likes to maybe think it's getting somewhere <laughs> in the meditation. <laughs> um, but of course, in this technique, um, you can't really get anywhere because once you get to 10, you come back to one. <laughs> so there's uh, there's something uh, built into the way that this, this social breath counting works that kind of undermines that tendency a little bit. Um, at the same time, it, yeah, it gives the mind something to do in the same way that the noting practice gives the mind something to do when we're paying attention to the flow of experience. It's like, oh yeah, there's seeing, there's thinking, there's planning. It's like, yeah, let's employ the mind um, instead of fighting against it, um, which, you know, it doesn't usually work in my experience. So, so that's the, the basics of the social, uh, of the breath counting technique. Uh, to make it social, we've got to do it out loud and do it together. So how does that work? Well, there's two ways that I found that we can do this practice, and they more or less correspond with the techniques in social noting where you're either taking turns, which is a sequential order, or you're, um, you're doing it spontaneously. In social noting, when we do spontaneous noting, we're noting out loud when we feel moved. But with so social breath counting, you can't exactly do it when you feel moved because it actually has to be tied to your breathing. Um, it's not like when I feel like it, it's no, it's when you get to the bottom of your out breath, then you count. Uh, and that's how we're going to do for this practice. So when you get toward the very bottom of your out breath, of course, you'll have a little bit of air left to count. But the idea is to get to the bottom of the out breath as far as you can. And then when you get there, you say one. Now, if we're doing the sequential order, we're taking turns, and we're in, like, say, a small group of three people for instance, then when I get to the bottom of my out breath and it's my turn, I'd say one. Then the next person would say two when they get to the bottom of their next out breath. And then the next person would go and they would get, they get to the next bottom of their next out breath, they would say three. So we're counting up together to 10. We're not over here doing counting up to 10 by ourselves in a group of people, this is what makes it social. We're counting up together. So it's like a group task, like a group project. But we're still syncing it, we're connecting it to our own breath. Um, so that we're using the breath as a focal point, uh, as a, a place to come back to and collect. In the spontaneous version, and I like to do both of these together um, so you can kind of get a feel for how each one works. In the spontaneous version of the practice, we're still counting up to 10 together in the same way. But the difference is you're not just counting it when it's your turn. Every time you get to the bottom of your next out breath in the spontaneous form, you're counting the next number, okay, up to 10. 
So that means in the spontaneous form, there's a bit more counting um, because you're counting every breath. Whereas if it's not your turn and someone is breathing out and then you're waiting for them to count the next number in the sequential turn taking, you might already have breathed out once and you don't say anything because it's not your turn. Um, but in the spontaneous form of the practice, spontaneous social breath counting, you're counting every single time you get to the bottom of the out breath. That also means that you may count the same number at the same time as someone or roughly around the same time because your, your, your out breath would synchronize. And that's okay. Uh, if that happens, you don't have to go back to one. The next person, when they get to the bottom of their next out breath, just counts the next number. Um, and once you get to 10, the next person goes back to one and you just count up from one to 10, counting the breath, either taking turns or spontaneously, whichever variation that we're doing. 